Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Gulfstream G500 makes its first flight. Lockheed Martin picks up the Duat's contract. Cessna halts their diesel Skylane program. I'm Brie Cross, it is May 19th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Gulfstream Aerospace Corporation has announced that their all-new Gulfstream G500 successfully completed its first flight yesterday. The G500 is part of Gulfstream's new family of clean sheet aircraft, the G500 and 600, and the first of the two to begin flight tests. The G500 took off from Savannah Hilton Head International Airport and climbed to a maximum altitude of 15,000 feet. During the two hour and 16 minute flight, the crew exercised all primary flight control systems, evaluated handling qualities, performed simulated approach and go around procedures, and checked all systems using the new Symmetry Flight Deck touchscreen controllers. The aircraft achieved a maximum airspeed of 194 knots. The G500 flight test program consists of five aircraft, including a fully outfitted production aircraft that will allow the company to test all the interior elements and complete integration of the aircraft systems with the passenger experience. The G500 can fly 5,000 nautical miles at Mach 0.85 or 3,800 nautical miles at Mach 0.90. It is powered by the new Pratt & Whitney Canada PW814GA engine. The FAA has selected Lockheed Martin to provide online flight service tools to the general aviation community, helping them to plan and navigate national airspace safely. Under the DUATS 2 contract program, Lockheed Martin expands their current work to provide weather information, flight plan processing, and in-flight support to pilots. These services are provided both on the ground during pre-flight planning and in-flight with operational updates and emergency services. Over the next few weeks, the Lockheed Martin Flight Services team will provide a series of live and on-demand broadcast webinars and YouTube videos to assist new users in joining the thousands of fellow pilots using the online component of flight services. After the break, Cessna's diesel-powered Skylane is put on the back burner. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Cessna has stopped taking orders for its planned Cessna 182 JTA diesel-powered aircraft but an Avgas-fueled version of the airplane is about to return to production. Cessna spokeswoman Lindsay Adrian confirmed that the company, quote, is currently not taking new orders for the 182 JTA. Maintaining the relationships we have with our customers is of the utmost importance to us. Because certification has taken longer than expected, we are giving order holders options, including having their deposit returned, end quote. The Skylane was to have been powered by an SMA SR305 turbocharged engine but one test aircraft suffered a turbocharger failure early in its development. Cessna had sought full certification for the engine rather than an endorsement of European certification. Cessna has already taken several orders for the Lycoming-powered 182T airplanes, including 17 from the Civil Air Patrol. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. For this week's events, we are featuring two in California and a couple in the middle of the country. Would you believe there is such a thing as the world's smallest airshow? 
If you're into glider flying, you won't want to miss the Western Vintage and Classics Regatta being held in Tehachapi, California, May 22nd through 26th. Action takes place at the Mountain Valley Airport, located where mountain soaring rules. The Salute to Veterans 27th Annual Celebration takes place in Columbia, Missouri on May 23rd and 24th. The two-day event features the Canadian Forces Snowbirds, an appearance by the Osprey, the Army Golden Knights Parachute Team, and much more. If you like air shows, why not try out the world's smallest air show? Being held on May 23rd in Yano, California, there will be ultralight, light sport, and general aviation flying and static displays, RC airplanes, a rocket demonstration, skydivers, and other events. It is all free. After these messages, new Pratt & Whitney engine receives certification. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Transport Canada has granted type certification to Pratt & Whitney Canada for its new PW307D turbofan engine. This engine will power Dassault's aviation new Falcon 8X, a three-engine ultra-long-range business jet. The Airline Pilots Association International has issued a State of Our Skies Canada report. It proposes policy solutions to help create a better business environment and improve the overall state of the Canadian aviation industry. The National Air Transportation Association provided members of the Senate Commerce Committee with its views on air traffic control reform. This meeting was in advance of the committee's hearing entitled FAA Reauthorization, Air Traffic Control Modernization and Reform. George E. Alcorn, a pioneering African-American physicist and engineer, was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame last week. He was honored for his many inventions and patents developed in a 34-year career at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Larry R. Flynn, president of Gulfstream Aerospace Corporation, has informed the corporation of his intention to retire on June 30th for health reasons. Mark L. Burns, president of product support for Gulfstream, will succeed Flynn as president of Gulfstream. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. We reminded you a couple of months back that the Valdez type short takeoff and landing demonstrations are on the schedule again for EAA Air Venture 2015. So if you're wondering why we're bringing it up again, it is because the actual Valdez competition was held earlier this month and the competitors put in some fierce performances. Bobby Breeden needed only 44 feet of runway to take off and land in an experimental glacier cub. This performance topped off all others at Valdez and placed him as the winner of the alternate bush class. Breeden paired a 24-foot takeoff with his second 20-foot landing of the day in less than ideal conditions, including 14 knot winds. The Valdez stole activities at AirVenture this year will take place during the afternoon air show on selected evenings at EAA AirVenture's Grass Airstrip for ultralights on the south end of the grounds. This is definitely something you do not want to miss. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, 
with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.